Apple's world is buzzing again. The new M5 chip takes AI performance to the next level. Swift gets its own profiling tool, and developers keep finding clever ways to use SPM. Meanwhile, iOS 26 and macOS 26 aren't having the smoothest debut, and cybersecurity takes center stage with Moonlock and Hacktivate. Hi there, this is Main News, your monthly digest on iOS and macOS development. I'm Roman Mishenko, a software engineer at CleanMyMac. Apple has announced the M5 chip, the latest addition to its Apple Silicon lineup, which focuses on enhancement on device AI performance and overall efficiency. It's a special event level update, but Apple shared M5 chip news via press release. The M5 is built on 3 nanometer process and features a 10 core CPU and 10 core GPU offering up to four times faster graphic performance compared to the M4. It also includes a 16-core neural engine, enabling faster and more capable AI processing directly on the device. According to Apple, the new chip delivers 15% faster CPU performance and 45% faster graphics, while maintaining energy efficiency. The M5 will appear first in new models of the MacBook Pro, iPad Pro and Apple Vision Pro. Speaking of Apple Vision Pro, the updated version will also include a dual knit band to balance the weight. It looks like Apple has finally recognized the weight issue of the device and is trying to solve them. Apple calls M5 the biggest leap in AI performance ever for Apple Silicon. And it's clear that M5 isn't just faster, it's built for AI-driven future. Unfortunately, M5 Pro and M5 Max are yet to be presented. The Swift project has released the Swift Profile Recorder, a new open-source profiling tool designed to make performance analysis easier and more accessible for Swift developers, especially those running code in production or cloud environments. Swift Profile Recorder acts as an in-process sampling profiler, meaning it collects text samples directly inside the running Swift program without requiring system-level access or external profiles like Gtrace or eBPF. This makes it particularly useful for server-side Swift applications or restricted environments where traditional tools are unavailable. The recorder captures call stack samples at configurable intervals, allowing developers to see where their application spends the most CPU time. The resulting data helps identify hot paths, bottlenecks, and regressions in performance. The tool records lightweight samples and exports them in the common formats, allowing developers to visualize and analyze performance data with existing tools. Apple's internal teams have already used Swift Profile Recorder to monitor Swift services at scale, helping track down regressions and recurring performance issues. Its open source release shows that the Swift team wants to make Swift more practical for performance critical systems. In a recent blog post, developer Klaus Peter Anima shared a simple way to access Swift Package Manager dependency versions directly at the runtime, which might be useful for displaying this info in a debug or about screen. Klaus initially tried using an Xcode run script to extract version data during build time, but ran into code signing issues on macOS. The goal was to find a more reliable and portable solution. Instead of relying on build time script, the post suggests bundling the package result file, which SPM automatically generates into the app. At runtime, this JSON file can be decoded to read dependency name, versions, or commit hashes. This approach works on both macOS and iOS, requires no extra tools, and provides accurate version data for your bundled dependencies, making it ideal for version tracking acknowledgements or diagnosis. You can read the full post by the link in the description. The rollout of iOS 26 and macOS 26 Tahoe hasn't gone as smoothly as Apple hoped. Across Reddit, YouTube and support forums, users are reporting a range of frustrating problems, from battery drain and overheating to major performance slowdowns on Macs. Many Mac users report that their systems start to lag after just a few hours of use. Window animations shatter, 
the mouse cursor becomes sluggish and simple tasks like dragging files feels delayed. The issue doesn't seem tied to a specific Mac model. Both Intel and Apple Silicon machines are affected. Some users point to Windows Server or GPU load spikes as potential culprits, while others suspect compatibility issue with electron-based apps. iPhone users upgrading to iOS 26 have also noticed problem. Apart from rapid battery drain and overheating, there is also an interesting bug with the system keyboard. After updating, many users report that the system keyboard sometimes inserts incorrect characters into text fields, even though the on-screen animation shows the right key being pressed. Here, you can see me pressing the letter U and getting the letter H instead. And here, I'm getting the letter N for November, even though it clearly shows I pressed the letter M for Mike. The problem seems to occur on both older and newer iPhones, suggesting it's a system-level performance issue rather than a hardware limitation. Personally, I faced the problem with the number update on lock screen, where it disappears or it's rendered only partially. A new CTF game called Hacktivate has been released for iPhone, iPad and Mac, aiming to make cybersecurity education more interactive and accessible. Created by developer Paul Hudson, the app turns real-world hacking techniques into playable missions that teach users how cyber attacks and digital defense actually work. Hacktivate features over 240 missions inspired by real-world cybersecurity scenarios. Players travel virtually around the world, solving puzzles that involve code breaking, data forensics, stenography, and even network exploits all within a safe educational environment. The app is designed for a wide audience ranging from students to teachers to hobbyists and developers seeking to improve their security knowledge. It's already gaining attention from educators with early feedback from schools like Ethan College and Cambridge Math Schools where teachers say students are actually engaging with lessons and building practical skills. According to Hudson, the goal is to make learning cybersecurity approachable, hands-on and fun, not just to professionals, but for anyone curious about how the digital world really works. Meanwhile, the number of malware detection on Mac OS increased by 20% in 2024 compared to the previous year. So here's some more security news. We at MacPaw have launched Moonlock, a new cybersecurity application exclusively for macOS users. Its goal to provide comprehensive security for Mac owners. But as a human, it is your fundamental right to feel protected, both in physical and digital worlds. That is why MacPaw launches Moonlock, a new cybersecurity division, where we make software that seamlessly protects you as you live your life. But we all know that online security can feel overwhelming, full of jargon, warnings and fear. But it doesn't have to be that way. Moonlock was born from a simple belief. Everyone deserves to feel safe and confident online without needing to be a security expert. Moonlock shields you with Mac native powerful malware scanning and real-time protection, guards your privacy through a built-in VPN and network inspector, and strengths your system with smart protection and a helpful security advisor. It was created by Moonlock Lab, a malware research team that identifies new threats to macOS. Moonlock is already available for purchases online. There are several subscription options available, including an annual plan with 7-day free trial. The app is also included with MacPost setup subscription. We built Moonlock for the Mac community, the people who care about beautiful design, thoughtful software, and peace of mind in a connected world. Well, that's all for today. Don't forget to subscribe and see you soon.